Amen. I don't know if there's ever been a truer song written. Amen. What a, what a blessing that was. If that didn't bless you, well, I'd be checking up on some things. Amen. If you're a true child of God, then all you'll ever need is Jesus. Amen. And well, what a blessing that was. Let's take our Bible tonight and turn over to Psalms 54. <clears throat> Psalms 54, while you're turning there, uh, let me say, boy, what a, a wonderful spirit here this morning, and uh, we thank the Lord for all that he done, and, and uh, just the waves of folk that were coming to the altar throughout the service and the end of service, and uh, just the obedience, and I tell you, uh, like my daddy told me a lot growing up, obedience is better than sacrifice. That usually come right before a good whooping, amen. <laughs> but uh, amen, well, uh, so it's better to obey, amen, and uh, than sacrifice. And, and I, I believe that, don't you? Amen. I believed it then, I believe it now. <laughs> amen. Let's turn here, Psalms 54, another little short psalm. But can I go ahead and say this? Never underestimate these little psalms in your Bible. And uh, matter of fact, we really, what we're going to bring out tonight is only going to probably be from the first couple of verses of these seven verses. But I want to go ahead and read this tonight, and then we'll, we'll go a little bit further <clears throat> in the preaching this evening. And uh, y'all pray for me. I really didn't get to preach this morning, and and uh, I, I'm gonna try to be. I'm gonna try to behave the best that I can. I know this is Super Bowl Sunday, but if you ask me if I care, then I I just have to go ahead and tell you I really don't. Amen. That probably isn't going to help you right now. Amen. But uh, I'm glad to be in the Lord's house. Amen. What a blessing it is. Let's look at verse number one. The Bible said, "Save me, O God." by thy name, and judge me by thy strength. Looks like it's starting off pretty good, amen. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them, Salam. Behold, God is mine helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies. Cut them off in thy truth. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. For he hath delivered me out of all trouble, and mine eye hath seen his desire upon mine enemies. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this opportunity tonight. We thank you for your word, and I pray, God, that you'd help us this evening to feed your flock. 
I pray that God the Holy Ghost have liberty in this service and may we say nothing amiss but only that that should have to be said. For it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. I want to look here in these verses tonight at this little psalm. And I wrote uh, here on the fly leaf of my Bible and underscored it over this psalm, a cry of faith. Here we find a very interesting psalm, and one of the reasons that it is so interesting to us, if you've ever studied in 1 Samuel chapter number 23 and chapter number 24, you'll understand a little bit more about the writing of Psalm 54. Here we find the psalmist David. He's just a young man. He's been anointed to be the next king over Israel. But yet we find him fleeing for his life from King Saul. Now, the question may arise, why was he so fearful? God had anointed him to be the next king. He shouldn't have been worried. Well, can I, can I just throw this out here? The Lord's give us 3,000 promises through his word, but sometimes for some reason, we're still fearful of what our enemy can do to us. And so I, I want us to kind of keep that in the back of our mind as we look here at this passage of Scripture. We find that this particular psalm was written here as David was fleeing for his life. Matter of fact, if you look, if you've got a study Bible, if you look here, you'll find that to be true here with the Ziphites. We find that in 1 Samuel 23 we find that they had hidden little David in the mountains and in the wilderness, and they said, you can hide here and Saul will never find you. Well, can I ask you this tonight? Have you ever had somebody tell you one thing and do another? Here we find David, he's not only is he hiding, but he's in fear of losing his life. And the Ziphites make a deal with Saul and they tell him, I'm going to just kind of paraphrase this tonight. They tell him where David is hidden out and they take him there and he begins to pursue after little David. And David writes this psalm and he says in verse number one, Save me, O God, by thy name. This could easily be entitled a psalm of betrayal. But I like the words that he used in the beginning of this verse. Save me, O God, by thy name. I, my, my mind goes to Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If I was to, I could name a lot of very powerful, influential people tonight, and boy, you would recognize that name. I could name some football players and I could play some athletes that I could name their name and boy you'd know exactly who they are. And, and it's a wonderful thing to, for these children. You know they have people they look up to and such as that. But can I say this to you? There's never been a name like the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's kind of hard and I, I don't want to I don't want to be ugly and these young people and these children think I'm being ugly ugly tonight, but it's, it was hard as a child growing up trying to pick, uh, trying to pick, pick heroes when I met the Lord at five years old, amen. I mean, I tell you what, there's no hero, there's never been a Marvel comic book ever written that can even compare to what Jesus done for me. And here we find he cried out, save me, O God, by thy name. Can I say, can we look at another verse right quick? We know it in Philippians chapter number two and verse number 10 and 11 says this, that at the 
name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful verse? I mean, we're serving a God tonight that at his very name, everything that we fear, every demon of hell, Lucifer himself, whatever you fear tonight, there's coming a day at the very name of our Savior, every knee's going to bow. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's a pretty powerful name, amen. And then we find this said, and judge me by thy strength. You know what? There's been a many a times that the Lord has been betray betrayed on a, in a picture on Calvary as just a weak individual that couldn't take care of himself. Can I say this? He said, no man taketh my life. I lay it down freely. I, I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. Amen. You know what? My Savior tonight will judge us by his strength. Amen. That name, what does name mean? I underscored that in my Bible. It means a reputation, fame, or glory. Amen. I guarantee you this. If we took the time tonight and went back into the Old Testament, there's some places we'll find the name of the Lord that brought fear and trembling to the heart of mankind. I think about old Joshua. You remember old Joshua? There they were fixing to go into one of the greatest battles ever known in the Old Testament. And the Bible said that Joshua lifted up his eyes and there stood a man with a sword drawn in his hand. And he said, wait a minute, friend. Are you for us or are are you against us? Amen. And when that, hey, when he spoke, he, he knew it was the Lord. Amen. Can I say this to you? Hey, when the Lord's for you, who can be against you? And here we find that Psalmist David, even in the dark hours of his life, he knew that if God was for him, who could be against him? Amen. That word strength in verse number one, what does it mean? It refers to might. It refers to valor. It re refers to bravery. It refers to deeds that have been done that would represent the goodness of God. Can I say this? There's a lot of things you and I, whether we want to admit to it or not, there's some things that we're probably afraid of. Matter of fact, I ought not tell them, but I... I think there was some of the young people, they went to one of them little scary houses last year. Probably ought not tell that you. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna refer to who it was or call no name, but I think there was one that got so scared he jumped out the back door and across the railroad track and they caught him about two counties later. Amen. Can I say that, hey, there's some uncertainties in life that boy, it can bring fear in the heart. But can I say this? The Lord Jesus has stared in the face of fear. And according to Revelation chapter 1, he tells us that he holds the keys of hell and death. I don't know about you, but that sounds like the kind of fellow I want on my side. And so the Lord, he said, save me, O God, by the name, and judge me by thy fear, by thy strength. Verse number two, hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. Notice this, for strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. Something else I want to make reference to there in 1 Samuel 23, and it goes over in 24. You know what happened when they got after, they finally thought they had, oh David, they had him corralled, you know, they had him pinned in. The Bible tells us that they sent word to Saul and said, hey, the Philistines have come down to battle against the children of God. Oh, Saul got in a mess because he was chasing old David. Now let me just put something in right here. And this isn't the message, but I believe the Lord will let us say this tonight. It would do us well to leave other Christians and brothers and sisters alone.
Now, let me, let me just pause right here. You say, preacher, I don't, you don't understand. No, and you probably don't understand. I'll say this. There's a lot of folk, it's real easy to judge a man when you're on the outside looking in. It's real easy to pass judgment when you're not in the position that they're in. I tell you what we all do. We better leave our brothers and sisters in the Lord alone because you can't never tell. They might be some Philistines because of our old flesh and because of our old anger and the way we've been living. They may be somebody slipping in the back door fixing to give us trouble. Is that working? Amen. Can you hear that all right? You know what? We ought to just be Christians and pray for one another. And so we find, oh Saul, boy, he had here with. The Philistines began to bring wrath down on the children of Israel. And then you know what happened? Verse number three says this, for strangers are risen up against me. That word strange, that word strangers there, that plural, speaks of a foreign enemy. Now, I remember, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I thank God, I thank God for my raising, and I thank God for being brought up in a Christian home, in a Christian school, and in church. I thank God for that. And one of the reasons for that, a lot of people call this shelter, you call it whatever you want to. I remember, of course, uh, I, I, Daddy always believed in, in me working. I remember when I was just... 11, 12 years old in the summertime, he'd drop me off to work. When he went to work, he'd pick me up on the way back. And I'm not going to just point no fingers at parents, but it might do you good to make your youngins work a little bit. And then, and I work, And then, when I got old enough, the year I got my uh, my driver's license, I worked my first, I guess you could say, public job. I worked over here for the Catoosa County Road Department. And uh, I'll be honest, I, I loved that job. It was work, but I loved it. And, uh, but, but can I say this? They brought some fellas in, Brother Howe, that was, they were prison men on parole. And they brought some of them men in, and they was hanging around the road department, and they'd try to make them work. They wouldn't do a whole lot of work. They'd do a whole lot of stuff they ought not do. And for a 16-year-old boy that just knew about church and home and all he cared about doing was hunting and fishing, that kind of thing, and then to get exposed to some of these prison folk, that some things they had to say, that was foreign to me. Y'all with me? And I believe that the psalmist David, he wasn't perfect, but he was trying to live for the Lord. And now he's got strangers, foreign people that have risen up against him. He, he realized it. Didn't everybody love old David? Let me talk to you young people just a minute. That's why I try to really encourage you to pray and get a hold of God because there's coming a day soon if it hadn't or happened already. You're going to find out the world don't love you like you think they do. You're not going to go down here to the workforce and they're going to, they're going to roll out the red carpet and they're going to give you everything you ever dreamed of and in a year or two you're going to be a president of the company. Hello, somebody help me now. I mean, it's not going to just happen just because you think higher of yourself than you think you ought to. It would have been real easy for David, Brother Howell, to say, hey, y'all don't understand, I'm, I'm the next anointed king of Israel. Y'all don't understand. I, I don't need to be sleeping in these rocks. God's done told me I'm headed to the palace. Here's where a lot of Christians mess up, and I see it. They go in the workforce with their nose up in the air expecting everybody to give them some. Newsflash. The world hates you. And if you want anything, you better work for it. I, and I'll be real honest with you. I'm a little nervous about what kind of workforce we're raising nowadays. I don't, matter of fact, if my truck breaks down, if I can't fix it, I'm a little nervous about taking it to anybody. 
I walk in the door and you got somebody there, got their hair whooped around backwards, and you know, their britches is hanging around their knees, and they, can I help you, sir? I, no, I'll, I'll, I'll go somewhere else. I'm not trying to be ugly, but I'm saying, hey, just because you profess to be a Christian, ain't nobody going to roll out the red carpet for you. And it'd been real easy for David to just, but there was something down in the depths of old David's soul that was different. Matter of fact, he could have given him the fact of who he thought that he was. Then the second thing that could have happened, you read on into chapter 24, Oh, David was hid, hid in that cave, and they, you look up, we had the time tonight, we could look up some of these words and their meanings. I encourage some of you, go home, you never studied those names in 1 Samuel 23 and 24. There's a lot of wonderful truths there. But they were, he was hid in those rocks in that cave, and old Saul and his men, where did they come? To bed down right there with old David. And then his... His soldiers, you know what they done? Brother Stephen, they went to whisper and said, Now, David, you prayed that the Lord would deliver old Saul into your hand. There he is. All you got to do is slip down there with that dagger and job him in the goose on your troubles are going to be over. That's what they told him. Let me, let me say something else to you young people. It'd be good, and I hear it ringing in my ears from Pastor Gentry, it'd be good if we could get a little bit of character. No, David, he looked down there and said, No. That's God's anointing. And the Bible says he slipped down there. I like his story. He slipped down there and he stepped over all them guards and them soldiers, you know. And I'd say they was the best of the best. He crawled through all them Navy SEALs. Huh? I, y'all may not understand. Them Israeli folk, they'll kill you. And he crawled through. He, he ducked down, you know. And all them secret service, he, he slid up through there like an inchworm, you know. And he took that knife and no doubt he looked at old Saul sleeping and old devil started messing with his mind. And he just cut the hem of that garment off of old Saul. And he had so much character that when Saul rose up the next morning. They got ready, got their armor on, and they went out to search for David. Oh, David stood over on the hill and he hollered, Hey! And the Bible said he wasn't proud about it. He bowed himself. And he held up that garment. said, I could have took your life, Saul. The devil's lied to you and told you I'm against you. But I spared your life. Young folk, we need some character like that. You don't understand. I'm right and they're wrong. So what? Well, I I, I said what I said because they deserved it. So what? They probably did, but you didn't have to say it. I feel like I'm fishing the right hole right here. They some of us adults, it'd do us good to hush our mouth and open our ears every once in a while. And old day he held that up and he said, I could have took your life, Saul, but you're one of God's anointed. Oh, Saul had a different outlook on life. You know what might happen if you had that soft answer turneth away wrath? Next time somebody's ugly to you, you just be as kind as you can be. You better get ready, though. You heap them coals on their head. They get hot. Amen. Amen. And so, oh, I don't know how in the world. I guess we got over yonder on that story. Look here. 
For strangers are risen up again, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them, Salah. Now, I like that word Salah because now we can reflect. And, and, and David is saying here, the reason I'm having the problem I'm having is because God's not their God. Now, it was a turning point. And it made a, made, if just one of you young people get this tonight, it'll be worth the message. It was a turning point in my life when I realized that I didn't need to expect nothing from a sinner but them be a sinner. That may not make sense to some of you, but if you'll accept things the way they are, it'll even help your relationship with the Lord. And so he says here, they have not set God before them, Salah. Behold, now I like this. I underscored in my Bible. I'm going to try to hurry through right here. I underscored the name God here, capital G-O-D. And it's used 2,346 times throughout your Bible. And this particular place, it is used in the plural form. I found that interesting. And here it says, Behold, God is mine helper. Now what's he saying here? He's speaking plural of rulers, judges, angels. Are you with me? The angels, of, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. Can I say this to you? When you say God's on your side, you're saying more than what you realize. And here David said, Behold, God is my helper. I don't need anybody else. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. That name Lord there is spoken in Jewish reverence. And here he is giving reverence to God. Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies. Cut them off in thy truth. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. Well, his name's awful good if it's delivered you. And he says here, his name is good. Notice this. For he hath delivered me out of all trouble, and mine eyes have seen his desire upon mine enemies. You know what? It would do us good to not have tunnel vision tonight. And look at the bigger picture. And quit trying to wish our enemies so much bad. That day's coming. But see the bigger picture of there's a whole lot of folk that need Jesus. Amen. And there's a whole lot of folk that need you to just be a Christian. Amen. I'll be real honest with you. There's enough, enough of us here tonight that ought to be lights for the Lord. We ought to have, we ought to have North Georgia lit up, don't you think? Amen. Amen. Here's what we do. We get sidetracked. Well, the world, the world don't know who I am. I'm an anointed child of God. Well, they don't care. They don't know what I, I, I'm expecting. They need to take better care of me. No, you need to just hush and work. And I tell you, some of the greatest Christians I ever met, they lived it more than they talked it. We can use some of them ethics. And when they just be a Christian. I'm thankful for the strength of the Lord and I'm thankful tonight for His name. Isn't it wonderful? There's no other name greater than the name of the Lord. Amen. What a blessing it is. Well, we appreciate you being here this evening. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful week. Jesus don't come. We'll be back here Wednesday night, won't we? Amen. And uh, we'll be.